Hello there, it's time for another stellar episode of the official EFL podcast as we hurtle towards the final few games of the season before the playoffs, of course. And Playoff Chat is coming your way as we speak to Borough's Johnny Housen on their outside chance of still making the top six. It is out of our hands, but you know, I think if we give it our best shot, um, go for as many points as possible, We'll see what happens. Sky Sports' Juliet Farrington guides us expertly through the leagues and Grimsby's David Attell tries his hand out at our seemingly simple but devilishly hard 72 in 72. Do yourself a favour and get following us in all the usual places, wherever you get your podcast from, or watch it all right here on YouTube. This, my friends, is the official EFL podcast. Right then, let's get cracking. Juliet Farrington, welcome back. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And no, no way does time wait for anyone at this stage <laughs> of the season because we are hurtling, hurtling through, aren't we, to the very end? We are indeed. Not much say, time left. No, I mean, I mean what in general? We, let's let's not get existential off the first. Of football off, left. All right, good, good, good. I thought we were going to go really deep, really quickly then. But that's, no, no, that's, we don't, no, that's for later. And speaking about time flying, we've got a guest this week who has done wonderfully well for Borough amongst many other clubs. I met him a very, very long time ago when he was a young whippersnapper at Leeds. I'm not taking any credit for the career that followed after that because he probably watched what I did and thought, if I do exactly the opposite, I'll have longevity, which is exactly what he's done. Burroughs, Johnny House. And Johnny, how are you, mate? Very good, thanks. Yeah. yeah it's, it's good to see you. Um, it's, um, it's a pleasure to see how everything's broadened out. We covered Borough extensively in the run for the playoffs last season. There's still a chance this season... Of course, but now you've become a man of many positions. You played at centre back. You were back in midfield last night in the two-all draw against Hull City. Surely that's a reflection on the experience and your all-round greatness on the pitch. Is that what it is? Um, I think the game's changed a little bit as well, <laughs> and uh, to suit me, regards to playing that position. If you probably go back five years, even mm-hmm. uh, it's probably maybe a position I couldn't have played, but. The game's changed in uh, regards to it's more technical now, playing mm. out from the back. Um, you'd say less physical in regards to um, the rules, you know, the old saying of let them know they're in a game early on. First, but you still do that. that. Don't give me that, Johnny. You still do that. I've seen it with my own eyes. When I can at times, but <laughs> you get booked for the first one now, don't you? you know, there's no getting away with it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the game's changed and Regards to that, it probably suits me then filling at centre back because it's I believe something I, I could do when called upon. Um, and as you said, of when you've got that experience and you can maybe read the game a little bit better than some of the younger lads, it, it helps as well. How differently do you see the game when you're playing at centre back? Um, there's aspects of it that it's much easier. Regards to being on the ball, everything's in front of you. You can see the game. Um, regards to when you go into midfield, you've got players coming from here, there, and everywhere. So, regards to that aspect, it is easier. There's certain bits that I'd probably need work on. Uh, regards to the defensive position, um, balls coming in the box, uh, picking up, being aware of um, uh, your position in regards to covering front post, uh, middle, watching the ones coming in late as well. Um, so that side, I'd probably need to brush up on uh, and work on. Um, but I have got very good coaches here um, that can help me with that. And not just that. Um, certainly recently playing that side of, of Matt Clark, who's mm. um, you know a great defender, loves defending. Um, he helps me through the game as well. When you say it suits you, do you enjoy it as well? Do you enjoy that yeah. role? Yeah, I do. Um, and that probably helps with age as well because, let's be honest, it's less less physical. So less running? Big, yeah, less running, yeah. Um, so that probably suits. Regards to do I enjoy it? I do, yeah, because I enjoy a challenge. Of, a few years ago, I played right back um, when Woodgate was manager here and I enjoyed that now. But if you was to ask me which would you prefer to play now, right back or centre back, I'd, I'd definitely choose centre back. <laughs> Way too much running at full back in the morning game. It's a joke. Yeah. Um, Johnny, like, as I said, we saw a wonderful run to the playoffs last season for Borough, which then means that expectation levels change. 
Um, you've got to take into account, I mean, you had someone that scored as many goals as Tuba, you're going to have one hell of a chance of getting into the playoffs, aren't you? Um, broadly this season, um, how have you found it? Are playoffs realistic? We heard from Michael Carrick, still very defiant off at the back of a 2 2 all draw against Hull City. Is that still the aim? Is that still the belief, given, of course, Norwich, one of your former clubs, currently occupies that final spot? I think it's going to be very difficult. Um Certainly, probably after the draw last night, mm. um, games are running out of. But football's crazy at times, and <laughs> you just never know. So, I think you wouldn't want to go into a game writing it off um, and then not getting a result and having a team slip up. Um, so, it is out of our hands, but you know, I think if we give it our best shot. Um, Go for as many points as possible. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. As I say, it's extremely difficult, but sometimes football throw up these um, crazy results. Certainly this time of year, because you've got teams playing for everything. You know, you look at the bottom half. Uh, there's a lot of teams that are fighting to be in in the division, and and even at the top, um, the automatic promotions. They keep slipping up at times, so this time of year throws up all kinds of results. And as I say, it'll be extremely difficult, but you keep going right until the end, until it's mathematically impossible. I keep saying to Prots at this stage of the season, championship doing championship things, as you say, <laughs> the results, performances, that things that that turn up at this stage of the season, you can you can't really predict what's going to happen. Um, and you touched on how you approached or how you approach the, the, the remainder of the games that you have. Not saying that it can happen, but is there a danger that, that because you look at a table, you can lose focus or people can lose focus of what is still achievable mm. when you look at results and performances that have been, um, that have happened um, at this stage? Can you write yourselves off? Is there a danger of, you know, that you can lose that focus and, and write yourselves off. Yeah, of course it is. I think when you when you let um, outside distractions, if you like, <clears throat> take over, that's when you maybe take your eye off the ball and maybe start doing don't doing the things that you do that's got you to certain places. So, of course you can. You can you can write yourself off and. Um, as I say, let distractions sometimes take over, but human nature, that's mm. difficult at times as well because um, we're, all, we're all human and we all get caught up in the emotion at times, you know, playing for different things and you start looking at the table or listening to comments, you know. <laughs> Let's not be naive and say we all don't, don't do it. Of course we do because of social media and and all that, things like that. So we do get caught up in it at times, of course, and it can be difficult. But as we've touched on, this time of year throws up all all uh, kind of results, and and sometimes it's it's those individuals, those teams that can keep that real focus, keep their um, the mind on on the job. That sometimes can be the difference. It's not the ones that either deserve to be there or the ones with the better players. It's the ones that can keep that focus and hmm. have you, who's got that nerve to um, to see it through come this stage of the season. But as well from a neutral point of view, speaking in regards to the championship, that's why we all love it, isn't it? Because, well, <laughs> you know, I guess it's that it's that ability, isn't it, to, to, to kick on when it really matters. Yeah, and... It is all about the points, isn't it? You don't, you don't have to be pretty at this stage of the season. Um, you ask everyone at this stage of the season if you'd take a, a scruffy 1-0 win. Um, and we're no different to that. Johnny, from the um, the perspective that you see yourself, obviously I jokingly said about um, playing together a very long period. I mean, that... that Playoff semi final against Carlisle, you were magnificent. I did my bit of just running around with long hair, screaming at people, which um, 
I, I tried to do for quite a while, so that so that literally ran out of legs. <laughs> but, well, that's what I'm doing now towards the younger ones. So you've <laughs> set a good example, haven't you? It comes quickly, doesn't it, mate? The thing uh, about your long hair, just on. quickly. I actually, when you showed that picture of you, you. <laughs> They, he's got this picture at hand. Oh, you actually yeah. gave me, I couldn't think, but you gave me the Maurizio Pochettino vibes from when he was playing. Not that you were it, as not, good as him. It's not the first time, it's not the but, first time I've been, I've been um, uh, compared to Mopo. Uh, to your sex for that. I pre- that yeah. cool, right, I'm going to edit this so that it just literally says, you're like Maurizio Pochettino. That's it said. <laughs> Brilliant. So thanks for that. that that's, that'll, that'll, that'll go to the grave with you, unfortunately. <laughs> Come, coming, up, coming away. It's a real Mopo vibe. It's lovely. Right, coming, coming, coming away from Bot. The, the, the point that I was going to make, Johnny, was you know, I mean, the career, the career flies by, doesn't it? 36 now, hundreds of games under your belt. You've got Michael Carrick there, who seems to be uh, really well respected, really well valued. He seems to be a wonderful manager to play for. It, it's, it comes to us all footballers at some stage. You've got to think what the next step is. I'm sure you want to play for as long as possible. But given everyone that you've played under and played with and seen firsthand, does that then turn Johnny House and the footballer into Johnny House and the coach, the manager? Um, it's something I've just started doing, my coaching badges. Um, so I'm just on my B and I've enjoyed it up until now. Um, and I'm not too naive to... To think of, yeah, you can't go on forever. Um, mm-hmm. It's nothing that we can do. It, it gets us all at some stage. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to go on as long as possible, and and that still is my aim. But you have got to be prepared or have an idea of what you'd like to do after. And at this minute in time, it's it's something that um, I want to go down that road or mm. want to to aim to go into the coaching side. Um, and we'll see but as, a, as, as for now I want as you say I want to go on as, as long as possible and but your mindset does change you know mm. as soon as you start doing the badges you you look at things a bit different um, regards to the coaching there you know I've got some great coaches here to learn off yeah. and, and they've been brilliant as well because not just myself but there's a few lads starting to do the badges and and they've offered the thoughts, uh, offered the time as well, which is great because that's something new for us now. So um, if I'm wanting to step into that, you've got to pick up bits. And as I said, I'm, I'm very thankful that I've got some great coaches that are willing to give their experience knowledge as well and, and pass it over. So I want to learn as much as possible off them. Yeah, from a footballing point of view with regards to playing, but also now coaching point of view as well but the fact that you're you're going to be approaching or you are going to be 36 in the summer you've managed to avoid the injuries that so many of your players at Middlesbrough have experienced this season you have that longevity that Prutz touched on earlier and there is this talk of your own contract situation as well Mm. so do you see yourself still playing next season for Borough (laughs) I guess that's not for me to answer you. You'll have to ask you know, <laughs> above me. Um, yeah, of course. Would you I'd, like to? Yeah, of course. I'd, I'd love to stay. Um, it's funny because uh, it's been very similar the past two or three seasons when we get to this stage of the, of the season. And then you pick up another one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's nothing new regards to, to myself. I'm, I'm pretty relaxed about it and... Yeah, if I can stay uh, another season, great. I'd love to. Um, if not, that's that's part and parcel of football. I'll, I'll look for another club. I like that. And that's what it is, Johnny, isn't it? You love, you love, yeah, you love where you are, but yeah. then if you I mean, want to play, it might be somewhere else. So I, I, love, I love the fact that it, it doesn't sound cynical, nor does it sound um, defeatist. It's just realistic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> football, as we all know, it can be going wonderfully. It can come and walk up and slap in the chops or you can just prepare for whatever comes next and if you want to play Johnny you've got to be open to where that could possibly be and how you want to see out the rest of your career because make no mistake my friend it's been an unmitigated success from being a young player coming through at Leeds United to get where you are today still kicking the ball around it's been wonderful yeah then when you are a bit younger you see certain things that go on in football and it does take you by surprise but Mm. when you get to this age and 
you've seen certain things go on, nothing surprises you. And I don't say that flippantly. Of that's part and parcel of football. Of mm. nothing's personal. Like you, you learn as well. Um, that's that's just how it is. And yeah, if they want me for another season, great. Um, I'd love to stay. But if not, nothing personal. That's football moves on. It don't wait for anyone. And um, what will be, will be. Um, mm-hmm. As I say, I want to go on as long as possible. If it's here, great. If not, um, I've loved my time. and um, I've had some great memories. My only disappointment would be I came here to get promoted and I didn't achieve that. So from that point of view, it'd be a, a big disappointment. But apart from that, I've, I've loved it here. So... Um, Sure, we'll know within the next month or two. But that could still be achieved, obviously, depending on what happens either this season or or maybe next season. I'm just interested to know, and perhaps you mentioned it as well. But but the acceptance that that's football and and that's mm. just how it is. How long does it take as a professional player to be at peace with that acceptance? Because that must come with experience and from what you've seen to talk so flippantly about what will be will be even if you've got um a relationship you know with 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 that club that you're at if it was to end today my footballing career um i'd look back with very fond memories and something i've been very proud of um so if it does come to where no club wants me come the summer um that's part and parcel of it as well. Um, as I say, I've had my career where it's probably a little bit different of when you're mid twenties and you're still wanting to make a career out of the mm. game, and you've you've not achieved certain things, or you've not had a full career where I'm very fortunate. Of throughout my career, I've, I've been lucky with injuries. Um, I'm still fit regards to being able to play full seasons as well, which is a big thing. Um, so, as I said, I've, yeah, I want to carry on, but if it's not, I, let's be honest, I've had my career and <laughs> career a bit different of now, which puts will know because he done this for me um, when I was coming through of you want to help the young ones out and it's not about me yeah it's about the team but what can I do regards to these young lads f- coming through can I set a good example can I um, set them up for their careers and the way to do things um, so it changes from what suits me regards to how you play the game it's it's maybe what can suit these younger lads that are gonna help me, let's be honest Middlesbrough in the future as well very well said, Johnny. I mean, what I'm taking from this is Jules look, thinks look, I look like Maurizio Pochettino and you're saying that was really nice back in the day. Right, that's it done. I think that, that I mean... It was, <laughs> that's all you wanted to hear, wasn't it? Yeah, that's why you got me on. Teed you up for it, right? Anyway, anyway, Johnny, I've got to say, mate, thank you so much for joining. I know it's the day after a game and obviously at your age, it's all about rest and recovery, isn't it, my friend? Getting yourself ready for the next game of the weekend. It's been wonderful to chat, though, and wherever the next port of call is, we shall keep a keen eye. It's been a pleasure, mate, to catch up. Thanks for joining us. No problem at all. Thanks for that. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Johnny. Brilliant stuff there from Johnny. Jules, you've still got more brilliant stuff coming as well. Up next, though, we've got David Artel, 72 in 72. Hello, my name is David Artel, and this is my 72 in 72. Leeds, Leicester, Norwich, Birmingham, Stoke, Blackburn, (laughs) Plymouth, QPR, uh, Bolton, uh, Barnsley, Port Vale, Wigan, um, Huddersfield, Bradford, uh, Hull, uh, Middlesbrough, uh, Grimsby, um, Doncaster, Rotherham, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday, I said Bradford, I think I have. Um, Mansfield, Notts County. Um, 
trying to work myself down the country. Birmingham, I said Birmingham, West Brom, Walsall. Uh, keep coming, keep coming. MK Dons, Northampton. Um, lots more than Gillingham, Colchester, MK Dons. Uh, oh my word, that was quick. The wonderful David Artel, though, with a very respectable 28, which puts him inside the top 10. Seemingly Matt Smith, unassailable at the top with 38. Richie Wellins, 33. Patrick Bamford, 32. Danny Cowley, 30. Pete Wilde, 29. Wayne Rooney, 28. Ibo Adams, 28. Tom Bradshaw, 28. David Artel, 28. Joby McEnough, 27. Boo, he's lovely, really. I love him to bits. Uh, so that's your top 10 for the 72 in 72. It was nice to catch up with Johnny Housen, uh, a player that was a young player at Leeds United when I was there, Jules. I like to think that I, uh, they come across certain people at certain stages of their life and it either really does inspire them to do fundamentally better because they see me on the way down or I help in some little way. I'm sure Johnny would dismiss that completely out of hand. However, what they're not dismissing at hand is their chances of the top six. We'll come on to the top two in just a minute because we've had a midweek where none of them scored, which is a, quite a rarity. But Borough, Michael Carrick, Johnny House are still believing that sixth spot could be taken. It's feeling like it's Norwich's to lose. Are we there collectively, do you think? They are in pole position. I think Middlesbrough, outside chance, it's still mm -hmm. very achievable. Um and regarding Ipswich, seeing as you've thrown them into the mix as well, they're not going to go away in a hurry, are they, Ipswich? No, and no. I think the neutral would love to see Ipswich be promoted automatically. Mm -hmm. I still think it's going to be Leicester and Leeds who will go up in those top two places. That's why you're hanging your hat on. I mean, there's, there's some key games coming this weekend, of course. Leeds take on Blackburn. Ipswich face Boris. Yeah. You've, got, you've got Michael Carrick and Kieran McKenna together there, only uh, locking horns. So that for you, 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 you see Leicester reacting to that disappointment against Millwall and you see Leeds getting back to it and into the second spot. Time waits for no one, though, at this stage of the season. And you can't predict anything that's going to happen. Um, if you look at the other end of the table, uh, when you look at Millwall, who... Yeah. Maybe need one more win, I think, to be guaranteed of championship football next season. I think the fact that they go and lose to Rotherham, um, then Rotherham played Plymouth. I was at that game on that Friday night. But they lose to Rotherham, mm -hmm. but then go and beat uh, Leicester. You can't. <laughs> You can't make it up. It's, it's very championship. -y. It's, it's championship. -y, <laughs> and as I would say to you, championship doing championship, championship things. things. To talk, just give, give us a little feedback with regards to the Rotherham camp. It's been a tough old season, to say the least, hasn't it? All the noises coming out uh, is that Liam's going to be there to make sure that they have a very good go at coming back at the first attempt. It's been coming for such a long time and not, not, nothing for them to be... No, They've not been approaching things in a defeatist way, but it's because it is coming looming so so ominously. How, what was the reaction there? And, and, and give us the Plymouth take on it as well, because they're still not safe, are they? Well, because they beat Millwall on that bank holiday Monday, there was a mm. feeling Rotherham would go into that home game against Plymouth on a little bit of a bounce. Um, mm. The reaction had been good. Momentum had been good. Um, but Plymouth, and they had around about a 1,000 or more fans that had made that journey on a Friday mm. night. Um, right up there and they sang non-stop Plymouth obviously won that game mm -hmm. um and they picked up the points at the in midweek as well yes. um they changed the manager Foster has gone um they went through this extensive recruitment process they really wanted him to achieve something um but you do sense after three months things weren't picking up they did start well and then they sort of drifted away um, but they feel they wanted that uh, continuity, they called it, at the time. Um, they've got four points from it already. Yeah. Uh, there's a feeling they will be okay. Um, with Rotherham, it was interesting. To, I, I, the, where we were sitting mm. in, in the stadium, there was about five fans. Well, they were, they, were, they were fans everywhere, but I was sitting behind five fans, or in front of five fans, should I say. They were behind me. And just during the match, Rotherham were 1-0 down at that point. Um, they were, talk. I was talking to them and I just asked them because get a snapshot of what, what the feeling was, what was the mood. Um, mm -hmm. They were being relegated at that point. Obviously, full-time they were relegated. And it was like, the feeling was, mm -hmm. 
that Liam was brought in to do a job in League One to get right. them sorted, okay. to get them promoted. They said you could see because they were the, they were they were cut adrift at the point he was brought in in December, and they were they were supportive of him. They just said, let's see how it goes next season. Our opinion may change depending on obviously what happens in League One, um, but they they believed and they were confident. And because he has that experience of a promotion and getting teams out of League One, that they feel that the fans behind me, I'm not saying they spoke for everybody in that ground, yeah. but they were saying that there was a, a belief that he could do a job and, and mm. get them back in the championship. But you don't want them to be that yo-yo club, do you? Because no. with Rotherham, they get promoted, then they get relegated, promoted, relegated. You want that stability. Um, and, and Liam feels and that, that he has that belief and confidence within himself to do that too. So it's definitely building for next season. And yeah. the impression I got was that it was building for next season in, in, in December of last yeah. year. And I suppose as well, with, with that very kind of balanced view from what you're saying from talking to a fan there, that there's that understanding of what the championship is. We talk about the jump between the Premier League and the championship, the jump between League One and League Two uh, and, and, the, and the championship and League One, the different levels that the teams have to go through. Obviously, Ipswich completely blowing that out of the water with regards to how well They've done a couple of big teams went at it last night in Swansea and Stoke. Um, again, another big club that's hovering around at the wrong end of the table as we wrap up the relegation battle. Rotherham gone, Birmingham second bottom, Sheffield Wednesday third bottom. I mean, seemingly in the bottom three for the whole of the season. Huddersfield Town level on points with the Owls just outside. We've spoken about Plymouth, Stoke. They've, they've, have they put building blocks in place to to actually pull the fingers out? Do you reckon? Yes, I do believe that. That was a disappointing result at, at Swansea. By all accounts, they just didn't turn up Stoke. Um, there's still enough time to to put that right. But John Walters, who was at that Rotherham game against mm. Plymouth, funny enough, that Friday night, um, new sporting director there. Uh, they've appointed him full time. I was listening to an interview that he said that he, he was saying it's hard to articulate um, the drive that he has and desire to get Stoke City back to where he believes it should be. I think that will be a massive help for the club. He has so much love from the fans. He's so respected there from the Stoke City supporters. He knows the club inside out. And I didn't realise until recently, Ryan Shawcross <laughs> is there as well, the former captain. Yeah. Um, he's working uh, with, with the younger players uh, in and around the academy. So there's me thinking, well, Tony Pulis still lives on at the Bet365 Stadium. Uh, obviously not directly, but they 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 had such a great time under him, those mm. two players, and they know what the good times are like and, and how it feels at Stoke City. And I, I just think that, you know, the building blocks are there. Um, Stephen Schumacher has made progress of sorts mm -hmm. um stoke the fact that since they were relegated from the premier league they found it hard in the championship yeah. they and i and i don't know why they found it hard because they shouldn't have found it as difficult as they did but maybe you know these 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 uh, appointments now that they've been that have been made particularly with john walters is is a step in the right direction i'm still looking at that table now and i've mm. got it in front of me uh, I said earlier about Millwall probably need one more win. You've got QPR above them as well. I think Swansea. I think Swansea are safe. Yeah, as you say. I mean, you look above that. What for Tom Cleverley? He's done a great job against the likes of Carlos Corbran, Daniel Farker, Kieran McKenna so far. Speaking of Carlos Corbran, just to box off West Brom because we were chatting about it last night. Where did they find themselves? <laughs> fifth. <laughs> They've always been fifth for They've some fifth. reason. Fifth been forever. Fifth for four years. <laughs> it's been. I think it's like October, November. You know, and they may have dropped down from fifth or moved above fifth. Obviously, I haven't got the tables in front of me since that time, and trying to remember is quite difficult at this stage of the season. But they've always been fifth, and that always. is so weird. What, how how does that happen? <laughs> like for the last five months, six months, they've been fifth. I was going to start singing along the lines of Forever Young. I want to be forever. No, we can't. We can't sing. We can't sing on the podcast yet, Jules. We're not. We're not. not we're not that way out. The, as season, yet. the um, final just, kick of the game. Well, then we'll break out into song. Just, just, uh, just a final uh, wrap up for the championship. Stuart Dallas, of course, um, announced his retirement after trying to get back after two years. It looks like two extremely intense uh, and painful years for him. And what I saw on Twitter with regards to delivering that message in front of the. Um, assembled um, Legionite squad and the staff 
was extremely moving. He's, he's a fella that I've kind of come across every now and again. Seems like a very lovely fella, very well liked. And living up in this area, I know a big a part of the of the Bielsa team he was that got this to the, the club back into the Premier League after such a long period of time. So we wish him all the best. I mean, he'd fit the media, comes across well, he looks a million dollars and um, he dresses well. So fingers crossed he gets on board with us at some time soon. Maybe he'd be sitting next to the sofa um, with you, maybe, maybe, down the maybe. line. I, or maybe, or I, maybe I, he just wants to relax and not go through anything else for the time being, <laughs> just stays away from me. But on him, I think it's like two years he's been out for um, with, with that knee injury. and Staggering amount of time. It, it is, it is. And mm. you feel for him because you know what he's done, not just for, for Leeds United, but for all the other clubs in his career, but also mm. for, for Northern Ireland as well. And yeah. you feel for him from that point of view as an observer, um, you know, he says it's come too soon and and everyone else probably will, will agree with that. Yeah. Uh, that's a long time to be out. So whether that has helped him, do you ever accept it or do you ever be at peace with it? It's it's mm. one of those, but he will be out on the pitch um, at half time during the match at, uh, at Ellen Road against Blackburn this weekend. And I'm sure... Uh, the roof will be taken off if they had yeah. got a roof, but I'm sure there will be a lot of noise made um, just to show the appreciation because he has been playing a pivotal part behind mm. the scenes as well at Leeds United. So you do feel that there may be a, an opportunity of a role that could be offered there to continue that. He is a wonderful, wonderful man and we wish him all the very, very best. We're getting towards very nearly their territory, aren't we, in League One? Bump, <laughs> bump at the top. Derby second, Bolton third. Peterborough will come on to in just a second. EFL Trophy winners follow, though, with a great win in midweek. Um, yeah, so Pompey, after all this time in League One, desperate to get back in the Championship. Surely it's just a matter of days, if not just a little bit of time, Jules? Days, but they're playing Bolton this weekend. And that, look at your face. Is that is that a face of huge? It'll, it'll, huge it'll just be a great man. game. It's just a huge it'll, game. Yeah, just to see, because Bolton themselves are trying to go up automatically as well. They're, they're still not going away, and quite rightly so, because they've had a phenomenal season. Uh, Portsmouth, if they beat Bolton, will get that P next to their <laughs> team at the top, because um, Portsmouth will be up if they beat Bolton. Bolton, however, um, have their own agenda, and they too are trying to um, to be promoted automatically, just outside those automatic positions in third. Um, they've got that game in hand on Derby as well, which just mm. makes it even more interesting. Um, and they still have to play Bolton uh, after Portsmouth, uh, Shrewsbury, Port Vale and Peterborough on the last day of the season. <laughs> but that match against Portsmouth, that is going to be some atmosphere. Three o'clock on Saturday this weekend. It's going to be huge. One that we're all looking forward to, of course. Peter Brett saw them uh, EFL Trophy glory at Wembley. Um, two um, goals from Harrison Burroughs. The second one, he's got to say it's a cross because it absolutely was a cross, but what a way to end a football match. Darren McCantony talking very bullishly of, we'll celebrate, but the next step is... Just as big a step, if not bigger, promotion, hopefully for them, back to the championship. Um, it provides that really nice springboard, you feel. And given what Darren Ferguson experienced in the playoffs, I think last quite right. Season last season. Against we that chasing Moore. down, couldn't we? Yeah. I know. That's, I mean, that seems like such a long time ago, but it's such a wonderful game of football. But to see Peterborough um, turn out in real force at Wembley. And Wickham, I mean, it was, it was a, a very tight game, felt for Wickham given the fact that they got themselves back on level terms right towards the end, and then Burroughs stepping up, a fantastic season he's had. Um, they're very much in the mix. And as you say, as those, the permutations as those games work out, they can have a huge say on who goes up automatically. But more importantly for them, it's about getting themselves back in the championship, isn't it? It is. Um, and I think we spoke a couple of months ago around the, uh, the Carabao Cup final and how the EFL put these competitions, these finals right in the middle of a season and the, men the momentum it can have for the teams who obviously go on to win them. Um, we've seen that still in the Premier League with Liverpool and the fact they're still in the title hunt for mm -hmm. that. Um, you've got Peterborough and you, you talk about the, the, the next priority. Their next priority was to go to, to Port Vale. Um, and by all accounts, they stroll to that win. I do really fear for Port Vale this season in terms of 
relegation. Um, it seemed to be quite easy. Peterborough missed yeah. a lot of chances in that match. And they too, you talk about them wanting to get in the championship. They too have a shout still going up automatically. Mm -hmm. um, and they do play, obviously, Bolton, as we've, we, we've mentioned already, on the last day of the season. Five more wins, they could still do it. Uh, they believe they can get to it as well. So they're going to have a huge, massive say in, in their own fate, but also on those teams above them too. So the top six then, Peterborough then in fourth, Barnsley in fifth, Oxford in sixth, Lincoln just outside by a couple of points. Those teams near enough all have played the full remit of games so far. Down at the bottom, you mentioned Port Vale, Jules. They're on 40 points in 21st place. Cheltenham have a game in hand. Fleetwood equal uh, games played. Carlisle, of course, they've slipped through uh, that particular trapdoor after, I mean, again, what, what was a wonderful season, a, a surprising season, if you like, going up in the playoffs against um, Stockport County. So, what, what it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard one, is it? You, you get a, a manager um, who does perform such miracles and then suddenly the levels get changed and all the expectation levels change. You get the feeling that potentially Carlisle fits somewhere in between League Two and League One, but Going back to what I started this conversation with, the we're in the kind of nearly there camp. Let's go for the nearly there camp as well in League Two because so much um, <laughs> emphasis, so much attention on some very, very big teams. I mentioned Stockport County as well. They're almost there. You see the work that Mansfield are doing. But then Hollywood. Hollywood is almost in League One, isn't it? Hollywood. <laughs> and Hollywood loves a sequel, doesn't it? <laughs> Hollywood. See what I've done there? Hollywood love loves a sequel. <laughs> Just on Stockport County, as they are in prime position, mm -hmm. and this could happen this weekend. 14 years, the last time I think they were in the third tier of English football. And what a 14 years it's been for them. What a story it's been. Um, what they've had to go through and where they are now. Look, it's not, and, and also references to Wrexham as well, because they're not too far away, but it's, 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 it's not rare that a team or teams are promoted from the fifth tier mm -hmm. to the third tier in, in a couple of seasons, a couple of years or, or successively, yeah. you know, that can happen a lot, but with Stockport County, first of all, um, fully deserved. Yeah. Uh, they've had some brilliant one-off results and performances. They've shown great consistency. Dave Challoner, so many, so much respect for him. A lot of people talk about him in in these parts, in, you know, up here in the northwest, as you would know. Stockport's only just down the road from from where I am, um, and he's done such a job there, and he's been there for such a long time as well. Um, and they just had that ability to kick on, yeah, where when it, it, it really mattered um, and real consistency as well. So fully deserve to stop for if they achieve that this weekend. And, and you've talked about Wrexham as well um, and the glamour and, and, you know, that itself is in its, is, has its own story um, followed around forever by camera crews and celebrities um, and, and Mansfield. And then you've got Mansfield in the mix too. So I, I, I've thought about it though, because the championship has been really hard this season mm -hmm. to win three points when you look at Leeds and Leicester, who came down from the Premier League. I just wonder, with the financial backing that Stockport and Wrexham have, should they be successful, which yeah. we all believe they will be, uh, winning promotion to League One, how difficult League One is going to be next season yeah, could be super to get those three points? I think it's brought so much attention onto the that League Two in particular, I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And if he comes up to League One... Great. It'll bring all the attention, all the camera crews and yeah. all the celebrities to League One. And also, you can't get a ticket to watch a Wrexham game. No. And I think that in itself is brilliant. It's huge. It's huge. It's, huge. it's massive. That's what it's brought to League Two. And that's mm. what, if it goes the way everyone thinks it's going mm. to, and it should do, yeah. that's what it will bring to League One. And that's not a bad thing, no? Not a bad thing. We want all of the attention, don't we? We're, we're very much like that. And just to round off at the wrong end of that particular table, I keep looking at it, keep thinking Colchester with games in hand, they'll be all right, they'll be all right. But still, I mean, they're, they're still in the relegation places, aren't they? You've got Forest Green at the bottom, 43 games played, 36 points. Colchester above them, 41 games played, 38 points. Sutton, 43 games played, 39 points. So Sutton are a, game, uh, a point above... 
but Colchester were two games in hand. And you, I mean, given how many footballers and managers you've spoken to, the old adage of points on the board rather than games in hand. When you're looking at that, you're going, well, that's absolutely right. I mean, how worried would you be if you were Colchester United and the Cowboys? Well, Forest Green Rovers haven't really had the bounce we all thought that no. they would have. Um, Sutton United have, have, they have picked up, but they're still, they're still in danger. Um, yeah, the old adage, if you spoke to Steve Bruce was, you would rather have points on the board than games mm. in hand. However, does that port, does that give Colchester a real opportunity now just looking at it? Mm. Um, two games in hand on those teams around them. Grimsby, you'd think would be, oh, Okay, you think it's the <laughs> battle? I'm just looking yeah. here. Mm. Salford definitely should be all right now. Yeah, um, what a job that that Carl Robinson has done there since he was brought in, and it's had the the effect that they wanted it to do. The club itself. <laughs> I mean, you're probably you're probably emphasising what old culture some fans are thinking. Where you go, you take it. You take You take those two games in hand. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, but yeah, it's it, it goes just just goes to show. As we said, it's getting a bit squeaky bum at the top end. My word, how squeaky is it if you're looking at falling out of the EFL? Given what it takes to get back in, obviously, kudos to Chesterfield for doing such a wonderful job of getting themselves back into the pyramid. But it's um, it, it the wonderful thing is from our point of view, our neutral point of view, the media side of it, we're looking at all these um, different dynamics. We're looking at all the different runnings trying to work out the permutations. Well, I say trying to. I give all that to you, Jules, because, you know, my brain is small you, and, can't, and can't process that type of thing. So but my brain is a lot smaller. Do you um, <laughs> do you look at it and think of the form of the teams? Those I'm just looking at those three teams now, mm. Sutton, Colchester, Forest, Green. Sutton, you would think, were on the best run of form, although they did lose their last match, but they yeah. won their four previous. That's where they got yeah. that bounce. Colchester have just that one win. In those their last five games, uh, but they also got two draws in that as well. Mm. Forest Green, killed them. The draws, isn't it? Forest Green is the team I think maybe haven't had mm -hmm. the bounce that we all thought um, they would. But then, do you do you go back to what we talked about with Rotherham and do you do you bring people in to prepare them for the next season? Yeah. Yeah, because you've got to be realistic that, that. The, yeah. the damage is already done. Yeah, there's certainly going to be an air of realism, and we know what Dale Vince is like. Very bullish, will step forward, will lead that club wherever he sees fit to lead that club. Unfortunately, it just finds them there now because broadly, that story of creating something out of nothing, them going through the I mean, it, it's 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 an amazing thing to do, and we wish them it all the best go, for whatever kind of the pickup is off the back of that. It will go down, I do believe. It's a bit like the promotion. Uh, places in in League One, it will go down to the very last kick of the last game of the season. The perfect way to knit that together, Jules. Thank you so much for your time. Are you busy this weekend? Are you on the road? Are you travelling around? Am I on the road? Good. I'm always on the road. On the I'm trying. Board, to, I, I, I always try and prepare and navigate which has the best service station to stop off at. It it all comes down to the coffee of choice. Which which one you're in the mood for? Do you, do you go Do you go for the green and white cup? Or do you go for the Red Cups? Like it. Right, don't even think about it. Best service station you've been to in England, go. And, uh, Keel. Southbound. Nice. Not keep... northbound. <laughs> <laughs> no, it comes down. You can keep it... your northbound. You can keep your northbound. It, it, it's it's Keel, yeah. Keel, mm. southbound. I almost yeah. said Nutsford, but it's not Nutsford. No. It's Keel, mm. southbound. But if I was going up north... Mm -hmm. past the lakes and to Scotland, it would obviously be T-Bay, northbound. If I'm going to Glastonbury, <laughs> it's Gloucester. Off the M5. Amazing, yes. amazing. It's, it's like, it's like cracking, Teddy Tubby Land. That is, it well. is Teddy Tubby Land, yeah, but with the yeah. best cakes. Yes. Ever. On that Partridgean bombshell of service station chats, I'm going to let you go, Jules. It's been a pleasure as ever. <laughs> are we going to do this again anytime soon, or is that it for the season now? Because it's like running out. Ooh. No, you, you no, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I've done we'll, my time. My no, time is done. You've not said <laughs> I've served my time. No, <laughs> we'll um, we'll uh, definitely, definitely. There's the playoffs as well. Come on, you'll be involved. You <laughs> this know goes that. on till the end of May, doesn't it? We're just going to keep going. Then we've got Euros one. Then we can keep meandering. <laughs> a bit like this episode. <laughs>
Right, go on, do one. Pleasure. <laughs> a big thank you to Johnny, Juliet, and David Artel. Another podcast in the can. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Watch it all on YouTube, and please join us whenever you can. My name is David Prutton, and I'll see you same time next week for another episode of the official EFL podcast. <laughs>